Hello everyone, this is Dan. Normally you may know me as Warrior Dan on my YouTube channel, but today I want to separate my YouTube identity from my real identity because this is a story that is very real and very personal for me. And it makes me a little bit angry to think about it now because it's still very fresh in my mind. And I wanted to share this with you guys so that way if you encounter this company as well, you are very much aware of what happened to me and hopefully the same experience will not happen to you as well. When I started working on the notes for this video, I was reminded of an old Seinfeld gag, the Festivus holiday. Festivus in the Seinfeld show was, well, a Festivus for the rest of us. It was a fictional holiday, and one of the primary traditions of Festivus was you would gather all your friends and family around a table, and then you, the host, would rise up out of your chair, and then you would look at all of them, and then air a list of grievances against each and every person at the table, and basically yell at all of them how they've disappointed you over the last year. What is Festivus? It's nothing. It's nothing. When George was growing Jerry, up, no. his father no. hated all the commercial and religious aspects of Christmas, yeah. so he made up his own holiday. At the Festivus dinner, you gather your family around and tell them all the ways they have disappointed you over the past year. The tradition of Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. Now... You're gonna hear about it! Well, I'm not gonna yell at each and every one of you and tell you how disappointed I am with all of you, because that's not true. But there is a company that does deserve a whole airing of grievances style episode. And that company is Greyhound Bus. Now, me and my friend Bill, he and I were traveling down to PAX East. We wanted to go to the convention and we went there and we had a great time for the most part. We met with some pretty awesome people. We saw a lot of really cool developers and publishers down there. It was a really great experience overall. And we got to go walk around parts of Boston, which is always a pleasure. And so we have dinner and we start walking back to the bus station, right? We had left at about 4 a.m. in the morning. We took a 6.40 bus to get to Boston and then we got there for about 8.20, 8.30 in the morning. And at the end of the day, we had a scheduled bus that was going to be leaving at 6.40 p.m. and was going to get back around 9 or 9.20 p.m. And so we get to the bus station at about 5.40, 6 o'clock. We didn't want to be late or anything, so we got there a little bit on the early side. So we sat down for a while, we waited, and we waited until about 20 minutes in advance. It was probably around 6.15, 6.20 about this point. And so we went over to the terminal where the bus was going to pick us up, and we wait until about 6.35, and we still don't see the bus showing up. And normally, that's a little bit weird. Usually the bus for any pickup usually arrives a couple minutes before the scheduled time, that way the bus driver can get off, organize their notes, figure out how many people they're going to be letting on to the next ride, and basically get coordinated. So you want to arrive a couple minutes before the start time. But we figure, you know what, hey, maybe the bus is late, maybe they hit some unexpected traffic, because it is 6.40, it's possible that they hit some 5 o'clock traffic in another state and they're making their way over. Maybe they got postponed. So me and Bill figure, no big deal, and so we wait another 10 minutes, and then once we're at the departure time at 6.40 and we still don't see it, I decide to go vent over to the customer service area for our bus, Greyhound bus. They have like a customer service area of their own in the corner of the bus station. and every bus company has their own designated customer support area. And so we go over to our designated customer support area and I talk to the agent and I say, hey, our bus is running late. I'm, we're kind of a little bit nervous because we don't know what's going on right now. Could you please clarify what the position of the bus is right now so we know roughly how long we have to wait? You know, we might get ourselves like a snack or a bite to eat or something, and we'll wait. And the woman there, who's probably about in her early 30s at the time, was like, well, I'm not gonna, I can't sell you anything without your ticket. And so I figure, well, okay, I'll go get the ticket from Bill. So I walk all the way back, Bill gives me the ticket, I walk all the way back to the customer support desk. At this point, it's about 10-20 minutes past the expected arrival time. And so I get back in line at customer service, I wait about 5 minutes to get to the front of the line. I talk to the agent again, and she tells me that the departure time does not exist. Now I'm a little bit worried now because I'm like, what does this mean? I have a ticket that very clearly says 6.40 p.m. Station number X. I don't even remember what the number was at the time, but it doesn't matter. But it very clearly says on there that we're supposed to leave at 6.40 and this agent is telling me that there is no such bus. After previously 
previously telling me that the bus did in fact exist and was going to leave a couple minutes late. So she was already contradicting herself on this point, but whatever. So I clarified to her that the ticket is in fact legit. She double checks on the computer. She does see that, that the bus is registered in the computer database. So she was finally forced to concede that I was possibly right. And she says, it looks like it's going to be another 20 minutes. So would you mind waiting? So I'm a little bit aggravated at this point, but I'm like, you know what? Fine, I'll, I'll wait. And so I go back to Bill and we wait about another 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then we notice something a little bit even more disturbing happening. Overhead, right over where the bus terminal is, there is a big overhead sign showing the departure time and the name of the bus and the locations it will be stopping at. At about this time, the overhead sign changed from displaying the time as 6.40 p.m. to 6.20 a.m. And it starts showing an entirely different departure schedule, like a whole bunch of new destinations that were not part of our route. And so I'm very concerned now, and I go back to the agent. And the agent once again claims that there is a mistake and that a bus is still on its way. I return. Almost all of our fellow passengers are just chilling on the ground. I've got some photos on my phone. I'll try to put it on screen so you can see. I wait another 15 minutes. At this point, it's been over an hour, maybe an hour and a quarter at this point, and I return to the desk, and agent tells me that the bus was cancelled, and there was nothing more that she could do for me. This was after C had told me like three times that the bus was on its way, and that there were simply delays, and now C openly tells us that, guess what, there's no bus, and it was cancelled, and they never notified us on the intercoms, they never put anything on screen, they had many different ways of communicating this with me and many different passengers, and they made no public announcement. Not only that, when I was in line, several other people like a good 10-20 people were behind me, and they were also having similar trouble with all of their rides being cancelled as well. At least four different buses I know of at that time were being cancelled, and no one knew what the hell was going on. So I had a decision to make. I could either sleep there overnight and just wait for the 6.20 a.m. bus, or I could be a little bit ballsy and try something that I normally wouldn't. So my anger gets the better of me, and so I decide to make my stand, and I refuse to leave. Once again, stating to the agent that I had a valid ticket, and just to make her feel even more uncomfortable, I informed her that I had a medical condition that required I return home to take a prescription pill that alleviated my condition. This was personally a lie, as I had a day's worth of pills in my travel bag, just in case of emergencies, but I didn't want to tell the agent this, because I wanted to make her kind of feel bad. The agent tells me rudely I'm just going to have to camp overnight, and if anything happens to me, that's on my head, and I should have prepared myself for it. And that harassing her about it wouldn't solve anything. In the distance, he told me she was going to shut down the office, despite it being about 7 minutes prior to the actual closing time, and that if I didn't leave immediately, she would call security. In response, I set up my video camera tripod and told her and other bystanders that I was going to record this, and I just kind of stated out in the open that I wondered what would happen if the internet was to discover that a Greyhound representative, and I mentioned her name publicly in front of her, denied service to, lied to, and threatened to have security assault a 24-year-old autistic man. I told her I wondered what Fox News MSNBC and the rest would have to say about that when a live YouTube video showing her denying service to me based on disability discrimination were to go live. After about 10 minutes of this, of me pretending to record a live video, despite my audio on my camera being crap and the footage being unusable anyway, the agent finally just gave in and ordered a nearby bus which was headed to New York to reroute and make an additional stop to drop us off in Connecticut. While this didn't help the other passengers stranded there overnight, me and my friend Bill got out of there shortly thereafter. But before getting on the bus, we had to have one last infuriating encounter with the bus driver who stopped us, took our tickets, and said to us, and I'm quoting this verbatim, so you're the fuckers going to Connecticut. I respond with, Depends. Are you the fucker who's going to get in and drive us, or do you want to see your bald ass on the evening news for harassing two autistic adults? He kind of glowered at us, grumbled something under his breath, and we stepped into the bus. I don't think that bus went below 60 miles an hour the whole time we were on the highway. And this is a freaking bus, which shouldn't have been going over 40, so I could tell you he was pissed off, but you know what? The hell with him. The reason I'm sharing this story, and it's kind of a long story, so I do apologize. I'm kind of rambling here, and my mind's kind of disoriented, because I'm still a little bit jet-lagged from the whole travel. But I felt this was important, not just to rail on against Greyhound, but to really sow the pitfalls of their public transport system. If you are to go to New York or basically any big city in a bus, do not by any means of the imagination use Greyhound. Their customer service is abysmal, their communication skills are horrendous, and they treat their customers, and I was especially nice to them for the most part, throughout most of our encounters. It was only after they became derogatory towards me and insulting that I decided to take things a step farther and actually stand up for myself. 
Because if you're gonna mess with me and tell me that my bus has been delayed over and over again when in fact it was cancelled the whole time and only after four delays you actually tell me it was cancelled, and then you tell me basically to suck it and then to sleep there overnight, I'm gonna tell you what a lousy piece of crap you are, and I'm gonna embarrass you and humiliate you in front of your entire workplace, in front of all your customers. Because if you wanna be an asshole to me, I can be an asshole to you. As a kid, I used to be very, very wary of standing up for myself, and I was very, very skittish. Yeah, I had a temper, and, you know, sometimes I'd say things I'd regret, but I was never very good at explicitly, you know, standing up for myself, knowing what to say in the right climax, you know, having the right words at the right time. But I'm happy to say as an adult, that's a skill I've quickly picked up, thanks to fools like these Greyhound people. It's just disappointing I've had to be put in this position where I've had to make this video explaining why you shouldn't go to Greyhound. You shouldn't have to go through this as a customer. I don't care. I don't care if you're straight. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're anything. I don't care if you're disabled. I don't care if you're not disabled. You shouldn't have to be treated this way. You just shouldn't have to be subjected to all this. And that's why I'm making this. So that's it. I want to bring this video to an end because it's already gone on far too long. The long and sort of it is this has been my airing of grievances against Greyhound bus. And I think this has been a pretty good one, and that's where I'm going to end it. This is Dan signing out. Hope you all have safe travels on your non-Greyhound buses, because I'll tell you, this trip was a doozy.